Welcome to this week's edition of the Sports Show. Today I'm joined in the studio by Muhibur Rahman Shamim. Welcome, Shamim. Thank you very much. The 41 year old recently returned triumphant from Poland, where he struck gold in 11 categories, returning with 11 certificates and 11 gold trophies. This included success in the categories of the single sticks, double sticks, the paddy sticks, and knife combat. Mohibur attended a tournament which was also represented by 15 other different nations. He was an independent representative of Great Britain. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. How does it feel to be a world champion? I feel uh, so proud and I'm really happy. On this age I just made it myself a um, world championship fight for 15 countries they represent. On the people they um, like are watching me, I feel so embarrassed, not embarrassed, like a, so proud, you know, people, I make friends also there over there, so they love me, you know, they get to know them, so that's why I got for a world championship, meeting people, get to know one another. Wonderful. Did you have a lot of, did you have, have anybody there that you knew, or were they all strangers? They're, they're not strangers, they're really friendly, they're really friendly to me, so there was, uh, I was staying in the hotel, but uh, uh, I didn't pay for my food or nothing, they uh, pay uh, for my food, everything. For me. What does it mean to you and your family to become a world champion? This is not the first time that you become a world champion or a champion, have you? Uh, the second time that's my world champion. Okay, when was the first, Shamim? Uh, 2014 and uh, 2015 was uh, European Championship and now 20, end of the 2015 I've uh, done another world championship. If I'm correct, for the, was it in July you won the European Championship? Yeah, that's right, yes. Did you train during Ramadan? I trained in the Ramadan. How, how did that affect you? It doesn't affect me nothing actually. I enjoy myself because I'm waiting for a break my fa fasting time. Uh, training like a four hours training without no water or nothing. I feel thirsty but I'm okay. Because uh, during the night I've been drinking a lot of water so I'm okay. So the I reason, find it easy. The reason why I ask you is obviously in every single sport there's a little bit of controversy where it's felt by managers and coaches and those who feel they know the human body better than other people. They argue that people who are fasting, uh, their performance levels drop, whether it's in football, cricket or any other sports. I myself, as you know, have been running the British 10K for the last three years during Ramadan, no yeah. problems. So you haven't faced any problems either. I never uh, face a problem because I'm used to this, because I train my body like this to be used to. During the Ramadan time, people, they sleep and read Quran, everything, because I do the same things, but I train. So that's what my body is used to. Do you change your timetable slightly? Do you keep your training at the end of the day or after you break your fast or you stick to a normal routine? I can train anytime I want because it's, for me it doesn't matter to me. I can train after when I'm fasting or right. before I break my fast I train really hard because as soon as I break my fast I can eat a lot or I can drink a lot of water. So that's why I just keep on training. After the, before they, uh, like it was a therapy, after the therapy I train also because of my whole day going to be really nice. That's very impressive. For the benefit of the viewers, Tarawi, which he just mentioned here, is a late night Ramadan prayers. Uh, it's a lengthy prayer at the end of the uh, fasting day and it takes place for the duration of the month of Ramadan as well. And Shamim actually trains after that. Uh, so well done on that. Now talk to me about Dose Pares, which is the discipline that you've adopted uh, for your martial arts? Don't uh, surprise when I start doing martial art. I uh, because because I'm a martial artist from the since 1990. Before uh, 1990, when I used to go to school, so I used to do a little bit of a, a sport. My teacher used to teach me in a school, so I get interesting with this uh, martial art. So uh, I used to watch a lot of movies like Bruce Lee's Muhammad Ali, uh, Prince Nassim, you know, boxing. So I used, I used to enjoy myself. What did you like about Bruce Lee? Uh, Bruce Lee because. Uh, He's amazing, you know, he's, he's, he's a uh, footwork, uh, he's uh, like a star. So every, every move he do, he do uh, like a knife, sticks. We do same stuff like Bruce Lee do. So, you know, Bruce Lee do Jit Kondo, has to do, do Jit Kondo also. Okay. So Bruce Lee used to do a lot of martial arts. That's why Bruce Lee said, take everything and make a master, master of the everything. He's not master of nothing, but uh, he can be a master of something. So I take all of them out and I make one is master, Dosset Paris. Because I'm, I'm going to make a master of that. I can see the end of the Dosser Paris. Be a master of the Dosser Paris. So I know where, where my ending. 
And when did you start mash, martial arts? When uh, did you take it up seriously? In uh, 1990, I take it uh, seriously. Then I dropped and again I work in and I didn't continue not training. Again, 1993-1994, uh, I'll be serious, dedicated. I want to... 1991 in this country, I was in silver medal in Thai boxing. Okay. And it's then, a national championship? Uh, that was a national okay. championship. Then slowly, slowly, I was going to the martial arts. Like when I find this, uh, met in the, the Dosset Paras Philippine people, and I said, this is for me. So you've traveled to the Philippines? Yeah, I traveled to the Philippines also. Okay. How did you find that as an experience? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a nice... I met a master's like, uh, in Cebu City. It's a good masters, uh, uh, world grand masters. They are lawyers. Okay. So I find the nice people. They train me whole day. You know, doing sticks, uh, knife, uh, all this other style they do, and also they do like a mana mana empty hand and boxing, Philippine boxing, and also they do sparring. They like stick you do sparring like a whole day long. Sure. You do whole day long. You sparring when you sparring with the sticks. All day. Yeah, all Just day. like the films. Yeah, all like day. the films. Yeah, whole day. Because if you, I'm going for a training and not for. Anything else? Anything so I'm just else. training, just building myself, become a good fighter, good discipline, and a good person. Well, I've got a very important question. Now, tell me, when you were traveling back from Poland after collecting so much gold and silverware during this world championship, did they stop you at customs? No. Did they try to charge you extra for luggage? No. No, not no. at all. Did no. you just flash them your yeah, okay. trophies and walk through? Uh, no, just my trophy was in the inside in the bag and. Uh, you know the for the trophy, you get extra extra medal. Yes, like a gold medal extra. You get. Did 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 you wear your medals through customs like Mr. T? Yeah, I did. You did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I just come along because they was I got so much medal because I put it inside in a carrier that must bag. Have been, that must have been. And that crazy. was too much. I said, let me put it in the let next. People watching me like they looking at me like I said, I'm I'm enjoying myself. They thinking of where's he coming from? Everybody where's he coming just, from? All these medallions. Yeah, right they were there. But some people they asking me like, where are you coming from? I said I went to the world championship. They said, oh, congratulations, and then was they welcoming me. So I said, oh, well, thank you very much. Wonderful. Now, as a lad growing up in the east end of London, you've grown up here and you spent your whole life in the east end of London. Did you do you think being involved in martial arts? has kept you away from trouble yes i find it by myself because my let me give you example of myself as soon as i learned the martial art i see a lot of aggressive as soon as you go outside in the state you met different different kind of people that they got different different uh, mentality so that they have so they try to approach you so you just walked away it's nothing is there because you learn martial art discipline right. good person he said it's not worth it just walked away from the martial art you keep away from the trouble you're not going to go involved in the trouble you're not going to fight with anybody. So if I was to live on air now, square up to you and yes. push you around, your first reaction would be to avoid me. No, if you come into pushing me, I just move you and you just, just be there. So I'm just walking away. Okay, I'm just okay, going to go nice to away from you. Right. That's very good to hear. It's very reassuring, actually. Right. You teach martial arts weekly at a local school? Yes. Uh, okay. Where does that take place? Every Tuesday, Brady Art Center, 6 to 8. So I teach uh, stick fight, knife combat, and also double sticks. And also we got forms in Philippines. Different martial arts, they say they got kata. In a karate, they say kata. Uh, taekwondo, they say forms. We call like a Philippine forms. That's why we go advanced. So if I just translate to the forms, how they do forms, if I just keep my hand there, and somebody coming to me, and I can do like a judo. You know, they like a jujitsu, they do. I can make that move. The same move, I can do it. I, t I totally get what he's saying, by the yeah, way. Yeah, because it's the same category, actually, because it's, because I'm, I'm studying martial artists, because it's martial artists, same, same technique. If I just, if I'm just sitting down like this, and somebody coming to, or just lock me on that move, I can get out, go, get out from this move, and I can do something else. They will be shocked, because this is, uh, this is my um, uh, passion. And I can't even say that's my hobby. It used to be my hobby. Now it's becoming my passion and legacy. Leave the legacy behind so I can give it to the people knowledge they want to come. If you or your children, boys or girls, would like to be trained by a world and European champion, we've included Shamim's contact details at the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to contact him uh, to talk about the classes and also to join if you wish to do so. Now, Shamim, uh, who were you trained by? 
Do you have any notable teachers that you want to mention? Uh, that was uh, first when I started boxing. Yes. That was, was St. Jude's in Shadbo. used to be called. We used to pay uh, these days 20p for a boxing. For 20p? 20, 20p for a box. We just pay. We don't have to pay 20p. If you pay there for a club, he's going to be happy because yes. he's buying tools, yes. uh, gloves, everything. everything. Yes. We used to call him like a uh, uh, Billy. Like a Billy. I used to, we used to call him Billy. So he used to train us. He used to go, he's got a club in a popular. In a boxing club, he opened the club. In a, uh, uh, he's a trainer. He's an old man, but he used to be a good trainer in a boxing. Anybody else? Uh, I got another trainer after when I finished my GCSE, going to the uh, Bournemouth, start with my sister in Bournemouth. Uh, that was nineteen, yeah, ninety. He was he, his name was K. He's my trainer, Thai, uh, like a kick uh, Thai boxing. He was the world champion on that time. So he used to see me like walking around to the state, you know, going to uh, my brother-in-law restaurant eating. He said, oh, IQ boy, I need you to come to my cl club, you know, because I can teach you something. I said, what do you want to teach me? He said, fight. I said, no, 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 I'm scared of fight. I don't want to fight. <laughs> I said, no, just come along and see. When I went to the club, I saw boys, girls, everyone, you know. This, the English people, like, you know. Then there is no Asian people on my, when I went to the Bournemouth. Only restaurant work I saw. I'm the only youngster you know, from this London. And I saw they, everybody like training. When I started training with them, the condition they make, yes. it's like mm -hmm. a rock. And I said, don't hit me harder and nothing. When I start training with them, oh, amazing. With the sparring, the ring, everything. With the first day, they put me to the sparring. Because I can do a boxing, but I can't even do a kicking. Then I learn slowly, slow kicking, and I can, I can like a, a defend myself when they come to attack me. But they're not going really hard on me. But they're going really easy because I'm learning on that time. Like a you know more tie, and the boxing ways they see I'm I'm perfect, I'm so okay. I'm hoping that Billy and Kay would be watching this interview at some point, and if they do, they should take great pride <coughs> in the fact. I'm really that proud. I'm pleased to my teachers. You know, of they course, were teaching me. All. And if they do watch this video, they should have take great pride in knowing that they contributed towards creating a world and European champion. So after many years of fighting and taking up and experimenting with different disciplines you've now decided that Dose Pares is the discipline for you going forward. That's right, it's the Dose Pares, it's part of me now, it's every, every, everything to, to me. Well before I do Dose Pares I met one of the grandmasters in Europe, uh, his name is uh, Dani Guba. After the Dani Guba uh, I went to, they separated you know, from the Dani Guba and Erma Alexander. I stick with Erma Alexander, he was my trainer, er Erma Alexander, He's a well-known person. He's also he's a world champion. My uh, teacher, has, uh, they was looking after me always, looking after me like a brother. We're now going to switch off the cameras and indulge in a sport of sparring, myself and Shamim, where I hope to teach him a few new tricks uh, to implement in his career. But before doing that, also I'd like to wish him the very best of luck in his career ahead. The 41-year-old has absolutely no signs, or has no intention of giving up as yet and we wish him the best with his career ahead. Thank you for watching The Sports Show.